nestled along Wisconsin's North Shore, the cities of Ashland, Washburn, and Bayfield, as well as the surrounding communities, all share a heritage linked by the waters of Lake Superior's Shawamigan Bay. Here, the local neighborhood is defined by the lake. Sense of place is strong. Neighbors can see neighbors across the bay. What affects one person affects many others. Despite its wealth of natural beauty, the need for jobs and income has remained a top issue. In the early 1990s, awareness grew among a group of Shawamigan Bay citizens of the importance of working toward a sustainable future. From this awareness, a grassroots movement emerged to create sustainable communities that would be ecologically, economically, and socially healthy. It's a story of passion and partnerships, fire souls and friendship, topped off with a dollop of pie and politics. The prospect of rising energy costs and climate change, fed by a growing appetite for fossil fuel, was becoming a national issue. The ability of citizens, businesses, and communities to balance escalating costs for goods and services dependent on non-renewable fuels brought the issue home. With a passion to act locally, people representing diverse community interests came together to change the Shawamigan Bay community's unsustainable path and make the region an example of local action to reduce human impacts on the environment while strengthening local culture and economy. The big moment for me when it got kicked up a notch is when I decided on the spur of the moment to go to some presentation in Edina, Minnesota, given by Torbjorn Lati from Sweden on the sustainability movement in Sweden. And I thought, if we could learn about what they've done in Sweden, I know they have a good rep and we can replicate that here. Maybe there's something in it. And it, it was one of those things where you just realize there's a lot of community energy that's ready to plug into something like this. I think the biggest challenge for the Alliance when it was starting was to try to broaden the base beyond folks with an interest in the environment to include a broad spectrum, uh, those on the economic development end of the spectrum, the environmentalists and everyone in between. And what we finally hit upon was asking the mayors of Ashland, Washburn and Bayfield the tribal chairs of uh, Red Cliff and Bad River, each to invite 10 to 15 of their leading citizens to a joint meeting at the Shawamigan Hotel to see if we could get a broad spectrum of folks to embrace this idea. All the leaders signed on to that. They all invited uh, their 10 or 15 citizens, and that's how we really got going. These fire souls, named for their passion and vision, became leaders who would help spark a new model for community development and create a regional alliance for sustainability. UW Extension became a partner in this vision. What was good for the environment could be good for businesses, citizens, and communities. More importantly, sustainable practices could help retool and grow more vital economies. The Shawamigan Bay Fire Souls began building a common understanding of sustainability, promoting a vision of what a sustainable future could look like for the region. A turning point came at a Natural Step Conference where a new community development model called an eco-municipality was introduced. Eco-municipalities foster long-term sustainable communities guided by the Natural Step process. But it took a slice of pie and politics, an annual event that mixes discussion of political issues in a respectful community gathering for the idea to catch fire. By 2005, the cities of Washburn and Ashland had adopted resolutions becoming the nation's first eco-municipalities. The city of Bayfield and towns of Bayfield and LaPointe soon joined creating a synergy of five eco-municipalities. One of the uh, most important things that's happened throughout this whole project is it wasn't just one community driving this. It was 
multiple. There's perhaps five eco-municipalities, but we also have got two counties involved. At times, we've got two tribes involved, a couple other townships. Um, there's a synergy there, and the Alliance for Sustainability has been just key. UW Extension facilitated a planning process that resulted in the Sustainable Shawamigan Initiative. It also helped create a resource guide called Toward a Sustainable Community, Toolkit for Local Government, to share these techniques statewide. With eco-municipality designations and a strategic plan, the grassroots movement became the Sustainable Shawamigan Initiative. Neighbor-to-neighbor -neighbor study circles began meeting in homes, businesses, and libraries to discuss how sustainable development ideas could be incorporated into local initiatives. The first sustainability issue tackled through education and direct action was energy. Good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks uh, for coming. It's great to have you all here for the next Green Team meeting. Energy is a critical issue affecting community sustainability. So teams from businesses, schools, tribes, governments, and organizations came together to learn how to reduce their energy consumption. These are silicon panels here. With These early adopters nicknamed themselves Green Teams. Each shared a common goal of building community-wide synergy for sustainability. After this the one year of investment of our own campus in the Green Team Network, we started um, all the campuses on, throughout our college have adopted or started a green team as well uh, because we see the benefits of that. And we also have a district committee uh, providing support for renewable energy and sustainability across the college. So that's what we're looking at as far as our operation, our campus operation, looking at maximizing efficiency and transportation also. Plus, um, I was given a new part of my job was to focus on renewable energy and sustainability programming. Hi. Hi. I'm Kelly and At the same time as the Green Team Initiative, the Alliance for Sustainability was working on a residential level, going door to door, talking with neighbors about the benefits of energy conservation, offering new energy efficient bulbs and free bus passes. The Green Team Initiative was really an interesting outreach of the Alliance and work with Extension. Uh, it was funded through a grant by the Otto Bremer Foundation, which actually provided funding for three years for the Alliance to really kick off this operation. They grew from seven interested nonprofits and government entities up to 18 interested organizations that devoted uh, a lot of time with it, had green teams at each of those organizations spanning government, business, and nonprofit organizations. That initiative really got, a, got these organizations to look at their energy usage, to look at their environmental footprints, start doing baseline data assessment, and developing plans to move in a much greener direction. The Sustainable Shawamigan Bay Movement has an ambitious new goal, making the region energy independent through the Wisconsin 25 by 25 project. And it's taking some innovative approaches and partnerships to achieve this. The Energy Independent Communities Project um, was something that we did with the State Office of Energy Independence. There were 10 communities in the state and the goal of the project was to first figure out how much energy we're using as government um, entities anyway. And uh, that's liquid fuels and electric energy. And then the next step was to identify places where we could reduce consumption and start using more renewables with an end result, 25% renewables by the year 2025. UW Extension was involved in the Energy Independent Communities Project at the state level and locally. Um, at the state level, they helped in all different communities. There were 10 communities total um, to kind of co uh, coordinate the individual groups while developing their assessments. And um, here locally, I know that we relied very heavily on Tom Wojciechowski at uh, Ashland County and Tim Kane at Bayfield County. Um, both were instrumental in collecting a lot of the data from the counties, but then also in helping to put that information together in a way that made sense for others. In tandem with this initiative, Excel Energy plans to complete conversion of its coal-fired Ashland power plant to wood waste fuels, making it the Midwest's largest user of biomass for power generation. Jason Fishbach, UW Extension Agriculture Agent for Bayfield and Ashland Counties 
is conducting local research and education projects on sustainable methods of producing biomass to meet these and other fuel needs. Just down the road, UW Extension is a partner at the Northern Great Lakes Visitor Center. The center serves as a living laboratory, demonstrating how public buildings can become less fossil fuel dependent using alternative energies such as wind power and energy efficient practices like LED lighting. In Redcliffe, the Tribal Housing Authority installed solar hot water panels on 24 housing units to reduce energy consumption and incorporated green and energy efficient design into new home construction. Already, thousands of dollars have been saved through these energy reduction initiatives, and the region is moving towards its goal of using 25% renewable energy sources by 2025. Like many areas of Wisconsin, the Shawamigan Bay region faced a future threatened by unsustainable practices. What made the difference here has been the community's passion to find a balance that benefits both its environment and economy. Extension has been a partner, using the natural step as a model for community development, working with friends and neighbors to explore ways of doing business on personal and community levels that can be sustained for future generations. And it's a little pie in politics that continues to bring people together to explore new ways of creating vibrant, sustainable northern Wisconsin communities. I think this initiative worked in this region for three main reasons. One, there was a critical mass of people who cared deeply about this place. Two, they were informed enough about the issues to recognize the threats and curious enough to explore that further. And third, these people decided that they were going to take citizen action and make a difference. There is a huge movement nationally of local cities and towns to try to take up this gauntlet on sustainable uh, behaviors. And so I thought what we should do is bring Torbjorn Lati back here for a conference for everyone. And for a full day, people who'd never sat down together before to discuss this sat at round tables sharing their ideas for the future. I think that the lake has a big part of it. It's part of that energy, that pull, that immediate connection to the natural surroundings that makes people care. The people that live here appreciate this place. It's so extraordinary, it's hard not to. And um, I think people that appreciate that know what there is to, to be lost. I think part of it is also from the standpoint we're in the Shawamigan Bay area, it's a beautiful area. People know that um, our economy is dependent on the quality of the environment that sustains us. And so by, it's, maybe it's more visible to us in the sense that the, our environment is such an in, intimate part of our livelihoods and the why people move here, that we need to sustain that. Um, and then, you know, so we're finally making that connection to understanding that our, an economy is, is linked to the environment and, and vice versa. From day one, um, UW Extension has been part of uh, getting all of us going, working on ideas and things, been very helpful. We all share that environmental ethic because this region has drawn us here. And uh, I, I think that's why we've been successful to the extent that we have.